Good evening. Welcome to the earnings of you, your tidbits into company financials and operational insights. Thank you for joining us as we broadcast from Hampton Studios in Harare, Zimbabwe. I'm Ibn Mabunda, yo money man. On the show, we engage top echelon executives to get you up to speed with first-hand information. We also chat with the most competent analysts on the market just to ensure you're furnished with relevant and comprehensive market analysis. On the show tonight, I'm joined by the chief analyst for equity access, Respect Gwenzi. Respect, good evening and welcome to the Earnings Review. It's always my pleasure, Ibet. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Sure. Now, on the show tonight, viewer, we are focusing on the National Building Society. Now, um, I just want to respect for a brief moment to get into some of the details with regards to how the bank is organized. Then shortly after, we get into an in-depth analysis in as far as their operations and a little bit of their financials are concerned. Now, as I indicated, this is the National Building Society of Zimbabwe, known as the NBS. This is a firm that was established in the year 2015 with the sole mandate of contributing to the national housing stock of Zimbabwe and in support of government's policy action, particularly the Zim asset as well as a financial inclusion program. This was a brainchild of the National um, Social Security Association, the NASA, uh, through investments from the National Pensions um, Scheme as well as the Workers' Compensation Insurance Fund. Some interesting details where the firm is concerned is the fact that this bank is involved in the provision of low-cost housing units through the provision of mortgaging. And uh, this is a sector that has been affected, of course, in recent years by a lot of market vagaries, among them inflation, as well as currency wars. The firm is well known for several projects, among them um, the Adelaide Park in Epworth, as well as the Woodwork Path in Bindura. Some of the notable products would be what is known as uh, the Diaspora Mortgage Facility, as well as the NBS Transition sector app. Now, this would pretty much give you insight into what the firm is basically involved in. We're just going to take a break and when we come back from the break, we will get into their financials as well as getting to break down what some of their products are actually involved in. Um, don't go anywhere. Equity Life presents the complete online interactive presentation solution. Hosting AGMs, media and analyst briefings has never been this simple, efficient and affordable. Communicate globally through a combination of high definition video and your prepared multimedia presentation from any location of your choice. Interact with your invited participants from all over the world in question and answer sessions and voting sessions in real time on our safe, secure and affordable platform. Contact Equity Live for a free customized demonstration. Equity Live, real time presentation solutions. Thank you for staying with us, viewer. Now we get into the details of NBS, their operations, and a little bit of their financials. And with me on set is Respect Quenza, the Chief Analyst for Equity Access. Um, now, Respect, um, can you give us the backdrop and the background uh, in which uh, the firm NBS, as well as perhaps the banking sector, can you give us light into the macroeconomic environment that this bank is having to operate under? Sure. So the first half of 2020 has been uh, quite challenging. Why? Because uh, for Zimbabwe, the, in, the environment has remained inflationary into 2020. Uh, for, 20, for 2019, um, currency changes brought about this exponential growth in terms of uh, prices and so we saw inflation closing the year at about 520 and getting into 2020 uh, inflation levels remain ex escalated and as at first half we were sitting at above 700 percent so that really tells you that if we had a year or near growth in prices of about 700 percent as at June uh, that really shows you the kind of environment that we are operating in. As an implication, uh, earnings have been eroded, uh, volumes have sharply declined. So for a banking institution, you would expect that fee and commission income is reduced, and you also expect that uh, not as much goes into the mortgage business, because uh, mortgage business is a 15 to 20 year uh, 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 product. And so for you to, to, to be able to realize demand 
uh, the environment has to be stable, earnings also have to be stable. And uh, you're coming on the backdrop of lay layoffs in terms of workforces and this erosion in, 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 in aggregate demand and the spending power of consumers actually means that uh, we, we would see a, a decline in terms of the demand for mortgage um, for, for, for mortgage funds. So the environment has been quite tough um, and for the latest three months in, 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 in the first half period, uh, COVID hit and uh, most banks uh, did not operate optimally at the levels at which they were in the past. And for NBS, this is a bank uh, which besides uh, offering mortgage business also uh, offers or banks uh, on behalf of pensioners and uh, the, the implication was quite severe in that most of these, they rely on coming to the branch to uh, uh, collect their, uh, uh, their, their, their monthly um, incomes. And so the, the, the net result there was to realize a sharp decline in terms of volumes coming uh, or volumes transacting via their platforms, because this is more of the mature or, or the grown up age and they are not as tech savvy and also even the kind of investment that the bank has uh, uh, doesn't readily uh, accommodate some of the best technologies that are there in the market. I'm quite a well clarified backdrop. Now let's get into their financials to look at how um, they have fed particularly over the first six months of the year, which as you rightly pointed out has been very much turbulent, um, moving right up to this point. Of course, they, they recorded um, a net interest income that was to the tune um, of 16 million um, Zimbabwean dollars vis-a-vis -vis 4 million dollars in the comparative period of 2019. And these figures are of course in inflation adjusted terms their bottom line were, came in at uh, eight million dollars which was roughly 50 percent of their um, prior year comparative period performance and this of course would pretty much detail their narrative right from inception in the half year of 2016 moving right up until 2020 and um, over the first three years of operation their um, um, their performance was pretty much uh, more, uh, scaling by over 50% from $2.2 million in the half year of 2016, moving up to $5 million in the half year of 2018. Then we move on to the year 2019 and 2020 there, where we're seeing some interesting developments, particularly significant jumps in as far as non-funded income is concerned. Respect. Can you give us detail in terms of what we can actually read from these very figures? Yeah, I think uh, it's quite clear that uh, non-conventional ways of earning income uh, dominated uh, in the first half period. And uh, we can clearly see from this chart that there's been an 87.9 million uh, uh, realized through uh, fair value adjustments. And these adjustments on land and property. And obviously for a company that deals in, within that uh, nature of business, which involves um, an immovable asset such as land, you would expect some uh, growth coming from uh, fair value adjustments. Hence that 87.9 million which dominated in terms, of, um, in, in, in terms of income. But I think that trend is also following the 2019 scenario where we also saw that 20.1 million uh, which was generated from fair value adjustments and uh, overlapping your conventional uh, methods of, 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 of making money in banking, which is uh, basically the, 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 the interest side of things, or which is covered through mortgages, and then of course the fee and commission income. So for 2020, uh, we're seeing of course a 5.2 million in terms of fee and commission income, but then when you try to calculate that growth, in real terms it's actually a negative. So uh, we are back to almost 2015, 20, 2017 levels of uh, the level of fees and transaction uh, business that the company is generating in real terms. And from the mortgage business, yes, of course, this, that was 15.4 inflation adjusted terms, but um, uh, the, 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 the uh, net impact of inflation there and also the um, adjustments in terms of interest, uh, interest um, the, the interest that uh, banks get on lending, on their lending activity. But generally, it has not been a pleasing performance, um, I mean, across board. And obviously, uh, uh, NBS also suffered the same fate. Fair enough. Now, um, 
of particular interest i think would be the fact that this bank is making more money from non-funded income which is more than 60 percent of what they're generating from um, the funded income side of things and yet this is a bank that was set up with a sole mandate of offering mortgage services to the pensioners as you rightly pointed out as well as other low income earners in the country can you explain that conundrum that matrix there Yes, so, so the background here is we are finding NASA, which is the National Social Security Authority, which is mandated to manage uh, 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 pensions or which is, ma which is, which is uh, tasked to manage uh, funds on behalf of uh, uh, the working population in, in this country. Uh, so the hope is that this money is supposed to earn an interest in future. And so it's pensioners who contributed to NASA's uh, broader fund. And yet at some point, uh, these pensioners failed to access basics like uh, a decent home. So uh, NBS was created with the mandate of covering a, a housing backlog in Zimbabwe, which then was estimated to be uh, just above a, a million, at 1.2 million. Uh, so uh, this is where NASA comes in because they have a fund. And strategically, government uh, obviously used its muscle as well to uh, uh, push NASA's funds into NBS. But now, uh, um, with that in mind, NBS starts operating and um, we're now seeing a, a quite a shift which is being brought about by the macroeconomic environment. That's in terms of how they're earning income. So yes, uh, they were created with the mandate to provide uh, mortgage uh, uh, facilities. But then the reality of the day is that uh, the macroeconomic environment is quite volatile. You got to also maximize where you can. But um, what we are seeing in terms of non-funded income there, it's simply fair value adjustments on the land uh, 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 or the land bank that they have and some of the properties that they've already built. So I wouldn't term that 87.9 as a real income earned by the company. The real income there is uh, what we are seeing is the split between fee and commission income. And of course, there's a 3.7 to 15.4. But in real terms, uh, that, that growth as well is, is negative. But uh, that's what has informed uh, this non-funded income overlapping funded income in terms of the in terms of the income line it's really an implication of inflation um, i want us to look at the other chart that we have there and and just look at uh, their uh, their performances um in as far as other aspects uh, are concerned looking of course at at their deposits um the, their assets and how uh, the matrix is actually playing out there would of course be um uh, how it ties in with a non-performing um, loans ratio of just 1.87%. Looking at their loans aspects as well as their deposits, what does this mean and what does this boil down to at the end of the day? Sure. So what we are seeing from uh, the first part of the chart here is an assets uh, uh, position which is declining. And the biggest, um, 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 the biggest element of that uh, is uh, is what we call loans, and these are mortgages mainly. So the the decline in the net mortgage position, which here is shown as loans, uh, the decline in that aggregate is what led to the plunge in terms of the net uh, the, the the assets position in general. Why was there a plunge? Uh, the plunge is because you are trimming your book, you are trying to manage the environment, and the, 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 the uh, outlook there or the climate there is not as favorable for lending uh, activities. So that plunge in terms of the loans, uh, the loan book, actually drove the overall position in terms of the assets also going down. But you're also seeing deposits uh, coming off, and um, my, my view is that this is also an implication of the environment. In an environment which is inflationary, you cannot also keep your uh, monies as uh, bare balances or balances that are not really uh, covered by anything. So I think uh, this is what informed uh, the, this position. We have a decline in both loans and deposits. Um, as a means of making head or tail of the vagaries that are playing out here in Zimbabwe, the bank is running with what they call um, a, a diaspora um, product which they are offering mortgages to the diaspora community with very much 
limitations to uh, those who are in Zimbabwe, even if you could be uh, generating your, your, your revenue in foreign currency. Um, how important and how strategic is that very moment? What growth prospects would exist for that very initiative? Yeah, it's really an exciting market, but um, I would ask him to say there are so many other players that are getting into that space within the total banking um, or, or banks uh, in, in Zimbabwe, almost half of them are also playing in that space. So obviously it's a tight space um, and as well, given the current dynamics of uh, uh, COVID-19, you also expect that then the, the, there is likely to be a decline in terms of these flows or maybe uh, uptake of these mortgages uh, that are being offered to the diaspora market. So yes, it's an exciting, uh, it's an exciting market. The housing backlog is at 1.2 and we have a diaspora community of almost 5, five million, uh, half of which are in South Africa. So obviously is the, there are prospects for growth. There is obviously uh, uh, room for growth in demand. But likewise, the supply side is also getting tighter. Everyone wants to have uh, uh, their hand uh, on that juicy um, uh, forex um, uh, pocket. So obviously, uh, it's, it's a tight market, but it's, it's, it's good that they're playing in that space. It also helps moderate uh, the, implic the impact of um, a decline in terms of the local currency. Now, I want us to um, zero in for a moment in terms of what then could be the strategic focus of the group, um, given the fact that, well, this is a firm that is, has got um, the ownership of, of NASA, and NASA is a key player there. The National Pension Scheme is a key player there, which is pretty much government. And comparing this organization to other organizations that are perhaps led and run by the government, what strategic focus could this then have in a as far as the advancement of the bank is concerned? Yeah, so I wouldn't say that uh, the institution is, um, is run by government. Uh, I think uh, NASA's uh, mandate is to the people of Zimbabwe. It's, all, it's, it's just enforced by government because NASA is an act of parliament. It was created as an act of parliament. So um, that's the background against which NASA came into play. But the National Social Security Authority has got an investment strategy which is informed uh, by uh, uh, some of the deliverables. You have to deliver a return. And so they are not really a, 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 a government-controlled institution. Yes, it's a quasi-government uh, institution, but uh, generally they run uh, their affairs and they run the investment uh, book independent of, uh, independent of government. I, I, I don't uh, I recall in my memory uh, uh, the, the, uh, an instance where a government had to come in and, in, in, and of course, yeah, it happens here and there, but it, it has not been as rampant. So um, they have been able to, to fulfill uh, their mandate and I don't think that um, compared to other banks such as uh, those that, are, that government had a stake in like ZB and so forth, I, I think they're doing fairly well. It's just about four years into, into the game and more is yet to come, but um, I'm sure they could do better. Um, the bank also has other advances that it is making. Um, among them would be um, in, in a mobile application which they launched in 2017, where in, uh, the bank seeks to provide convenience to some of its clientele. Um, how important would be that development given global trends and also developments that are taking place within the domestic market? Yeah, if you see the majority of the clients that the bank has, uh, this is the old generation. They normally um, um, stay in rural areas or maybe not so much in town. So you, you, you get to have a lot of traveling between, I mean, on month end when they want to collect uh, their monies. So obviously, whenever you are playing, I mean, via mobile applications and so forth, you reduce the cost of coming to the branch. So you are giving more value to the pensioner. So I think that development uh, in the context of Zimbabwe, it really speaks to uh, not just innovation, but real uh, savings for the, uh, for the pensioner. So it's, it's quite important.
Um, then also they have got um, what they call the solar energy loan fund where um, there is um, some loan facility that is applicable in as far as uh, solar systems are yeah. concerned. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think it's also in that same vein to say if the majority of your clients are the rural, rural, rural population, what does it then mean? It means that uh, uh, they might be lacking in terms of electricity. So offering them a, a, a facility which ensures that they get to power uh, their houses uh, via solar, I think it also adds value to some of these pensioners and potential uh, low earning, um, low income uh, clients. So I think it, 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 it speaks to the broad idea of uh, uh, emancipating the, po the population and, and it, it, it is a good thing. Um, earlier on we discussed how the current economic environment is making it non-conducive for banks to continue with certain mortgage programs. Now the bank also has some projects that are in the pipeline that have been completed but the bank has taken a deliberate decision not to uh, get to the point of selling these products to uh, the local players or should i say the local co uh, customers which is pretty much a copy and paste model given how other uh, banks are also playing where such projects are concerned in zimbabwe when do you think these banks will get to a point where they will get confidence to actually get into uh, um, selling some of these housing units that they actually have in their in their property portfolios. A confidence is a function of risk. If you calculate your risk and you realize that uh, uh, the net result there is positive, definitely you take the risk. I, I think you. I mean, reading from the environment, uh, the current situation is still quite tight. Uh, there's a lot of monitoring that needs to be done and some of these houses were built in real US dollars So whenever there's a change in currency, you also have to see how best you adjust You have to study the market to see uh, payability or repay, re repayments of those loans uh, Is the market uh, uh, ready to, to cover some of those huge mortgage facilities? So I think um, Yes, we, 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 are, we, are, we will progress towards that but it will take time because of the transition that we are undergoing as a country. It all hinges on issues around uh, foreign currency, around um, stability of the Zim dollar and so forth. So the environment has to be stable enough and um, those that are offering such services would definitely get uh, sufficient demand. Um, also in the regulatory framework is a move by the Reserve Bank, by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe to increase the minimum capital requirements, um, which of course has been put into three different categories. Um, how will this bank likely mobilize uh, the necessary capital to ensure that they meet the minimum capital requirements? Yeah, um, like I always say, I think that uh, the minimum capital requirement is a moving target, especially to a bank that is uh, solely relying on uh, local currency earnings. Uh, whenever you make 5 million and we're calculating it last year against a depreciating exchange rate, that 5 million is no longer just 5 million, it's far much less. So um, definitely it, it, it reduces chances of meeting certain targets which have been set in real US dollar. But yes, we also note that the market is uh, re-dollarizing. There's a lot of banking transactions that are going on in USD. So you would expect banks to also start getting that stable currency. But all the same, the level of demand that is needed for most banks to achieve sufficient um, uh, capital to uh, uh, recapitalize their operations in line with the RBZ demand, I think that level is, 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 is very low. So um, it, it, remains, it remains to be seen. But my own view is that uh, most banks will struggle to meet these capital, minimum capital requirements. And we may see the RBZ extending that deadline to even a later date than 2021. Um, over the past two decades, we've seen a lot of banks go under um, that had, some of them had been in operation for over a decade. And this is a bank that is less than half a decade old in as far as its operations are concerned. Why should um, a depositor bank with NBS and what guarantee is there that this bank will not be uh, one of uh, the banks that we get to record as casualties in this uh, war zone called Zimbabwe as far as the economy is concerned. 
thank you. So, um, the background against which uh, most of the banks which collapsed in the early 2000s uh, uh, has is that um, uh, these banks were run by individuals and the individuals who ran the bank also owned the banks. So, there was definitely some a uh, lot of um, uh, insider related uh, dealings, especially in loans. So you find a, a director giving themselves a loan facility from depositors' funds and they fail to repay. So uh, most of these were uh, issues generated by that kind of scenario. Conflict of interest. Uh, yes, yes. So now uh, you have NBS. This is a bank that is owned by the people, but they, it's, it's, it's run by NASA. And uh, of course, there might be manipulation uh, by the government in terms of some of the appointments at, at, at these key institutions such as um, and NASA and even NBS. And whenever there are such instances where there is manipulation of the process, then there they, they can be tendencies of um, uh, failing to do things by the book. Or we, we commonly call it, call it corruption. So yes, corruption can be there and it can actually lead to, 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 to some losses. You could talk of issues around MedBank and um, its dealings with NASA and that forensic account, that forensic audit which came out showing that there's been some illegal dealings by some of the officers. So yes, it, it can happen, but I also think that uh, this is the first investment that NASA has gotten into as an exclusive investor. And obviously there are a lot of eyes around that investment and everyone wants to know how that assets get to perform. Uh, the heads have already rolled at, 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 at NASA in terms of some of the uh, directors' dealings with NBS. But I have, I have confidence that um, uh, even the new government which came into power a few years ago also realizes the importance of um, ensuring that housing uh, is prioritized, that uh, the marginalized also get to um, have proper housing facilities. And uh, to achieve that, they need uh, a player such as NBS. So um, this is in line with the national vision 20, 2030, and uh, government has to only but support this initiative. But um, for it to be very effective, there's need for sanity, there's need for um, eradication of corruption in the process, but um, I don't think that NBS so far. Well, thank you, respect for the perspectives. Thank you, Vio, for staying with us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and to visit our informative website, www.equityaccess.net. Remember to catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central African time. Ibn Abunda from Harare, this is Equity Access.